Hey there! Welcome back to the Noctis on YouTube. Every president in various countries has a special vehicle for travelling both domestically and internationally, including the President of the United States. The President of the United States is known to have several presidential vehicles, such as Air Force One and the Cadillac Limousine, also known as the Beast. But did you know that the President of the United States also has another vehicle in the form of a helicopter? Yes, you heard that right. That helicopter is called Marine One. Marine One is actually a special designation given to helicopters from the United States Marine Corps when the President of the United States is on board. The United States military has been using helicopters since the 1940s. However, at that time, the Secret Service prohibited the President from traveling by helicopter due to concerns about his safety while boarding. This policy was changed in the following decades due to an increase in emergency evacuations during the Cold War. Initially, American officials chose the small and relatively slow Bell UH-13 JSU helicopter. The Bell UH-13 JSU could only carry one pilot and two passengers. The helicopter wasn't even equipped with air conditioning and a toilet. Dwight D. Eisenhower became the first President of the United States to fly in a Bell UH-13 JSU helicopter on July 12, 1957. During the Operation Alert test, Eisenhower was transported from the White House to Camp David. He found that using Air Force One was impractical for short flights, and there were no paved runways for fixed-wing aircraft near that area. The helicopter was operated by a pilot from the U.S. Air Force, and Eisenhower was accompanied by a Secret Service agent in the passenger seat. In 1958, the Bell UH-13J was replaced by the Sikorsky H-34 helicopter. The Sikorsky H-34 was powered by a military piston engine designed by the United States Navy for anti-submarine warfare. The helicopter had a length of 17.28 meters, a height of 4.35 meters, and an empty weight of 3.5 tons. It could reach a maximum speed of 123 miles per hour, or about 198 kilometers per hour. The fleet could accommodate two pilot crew members and 16 passengers or troops. In 1961, the Sikorsky H-34 was replaced by the modified Sikorsky VH-3A helicopter. Before being used for presidential transportation, the Sikorsky VH-3A was a U.S. Navy anti-submarine warfare helicopter. The helicopter had a length of 22 meters, a height of 5.1 meters, and an empty weight of 6 tons. The Sikorsky VH-3A could reach speeds of up to 267 kilometers per hour. This made it larger and faster compared to the Sikorsky H-34. Shortly after that, the presidential aides requested that the United States Marine Corps convert the Southern White House lawn into a helicopter landing pad. The U.S. Marine Corps was then asked to share helicopter transportation responsibilities with the U.S. Army. When operated by the Army, the helicopter was called Army One, and when operated by the Marine Corps, it was known as Marine One. Meanwhile, the Vice President traveled with Marine Two. This policy continued until 1976, when the U.S. Marine Corps was given sole responsibility for providing helicopter transportation for the President, operated by Marine Helicopter Squadron 1 or HMX-1 Nighthawks, which continues to this day. In 1978, the Sikorsky VH-3D Sea King helicopter began to be used to transport the President, Vice President and White House staff and cabinet members. Nine years later, in 1987, the Sikorsky VH-60N began operating alongside the Sikorsky VH-3D. 
In 2009, the White House had a total of 11 active Sikorsky VH-3D and 8 Sikorsky VH-60N helicopters for the President, Vice President and other officials. Only in April 2002 did the Department of Defense initiate the VSX program, assigning the U.S. Navy to design the latest presidential helicopter. By November 2002, the White House requested the Department of Defense to accelerate the development of the new helicopter. The Department of Defense stated that the helicopter was expected to be operational by the end of 2008. To expedite the project, the Department of Defense asked companies participating in the project's bidding to develop and produce it together. Many specifications of this aircraft were kept secret by the government. But based on industry publications and congressional briefings, it was revealed that the helicopter had a length of 20 meters and could carry up to 14 passengers. Additionally, it was estimated that the helicopter could carry several thousand pounds of baggage and equipment and had a much greater range than the VH-3D and VH-60N. The helicopter was also equipped with defense features, including a radar deception system against anti-aircraft missiles, electronic countermeasures against electronic warfare, and encrypted telecommunications and video conferencing systems. In the production of this helicopter, there were only two competitors for the contract, Lockheed Martin and Sikorsky Aircraft. Lockheed Martin teamed up with a British and Italian-based aircraft manufacturer called Augusta Westland to offer the Augusta Westland AW101 version. Meanwhile, Sikorsky proposed the use of its S-92. In January 2005, the United States Navy awarded a contract to Lockheed Martin to develop and assemble 28 helicopters named VH-71 Kestrel. Five of the initial VH-71 Kestrel versions were scheduled to be delivered in 2010, while the other 23 upgraded versions were scheduled for delivery in 2015. The goal was to retire all VH-3D and VH-60N helicopters by 2015. Unfortunately, in March 2008, government officials were shocked to learn that the cost of producing 28 VH-71 Kestrel helicopters, previously estimated at $6.1 billion, had risen to $11.2 billion. This meant that the cost of each helicopter reached $400 million, even more expensive than the cost of producing a Boeing VC-25 Air Force One aircraft. Lockheed Martin blamed the United States Navy for the cost increase, stating that more than 1,900 additional requirements were added to the project after the contract was signed. The U.S. Navy insisted that no additional requirements were added to the project and cited the need to redesign the VH-71 to meet Navy standards. In June 2009, the VH-71 development project was officially cancelled due to the escalating costs, which had exceeded $13 billion. According to a report from the Government Accountability Office released in March 2011, there were three reasons for the ballooning development costs of the helicopter. First, the demand for simultaneous development and production caused extensive redesign of the newly built model. Second, a comprehensive review of system requirements was not conducted until four months after. Production began, and it was only then that it was found that the VH-71 design could not meet the program's needs. And third, the Department of Defense and the White House requested excessive combat and communication capabilities. After the cancellation of the VH-71 project with Lockheed Martin, the United States Department of Defense reopened the VXX program in 2010. Hearing about this competition, Sikorsky resubmitted its VH-92 in April 2010. Then, in mid-2013, all other aircraft manufacturers were declared out of the VXX competition. 
So only Sikorsky remained with its VH-92 offer. On May 7, 2014, VH-92 successfully won the rerun VXX competition. Sikorsky was awarded a $1.24 billion contract to produce the VH-92, which was equipped with executive interiors and military mission support systems, including three power sources and redundant flight controls. In addition, the Sikorsky VH-92 had a length of 17.12 meters, a width of 5.23 meters, and a height of 4.70 meters. The helicopter had an empty weight of 7 tons and could reach a gross weight of 12 kilograms. The VH-92 could also achieve a maximum speed of up to 306 kilometers per hour. By the end of 2015, it was recorded that the helicopter development program had spent up to $4.718 billion to build 23 helicopters, with an average cost of about $205 million per aircraft. Then, in July 2016, the VH-92 helicopter design was declared successful in the critical design review. This gave the green light to Sikorsky, indicating that they were ready to enter actual production. In 2017, the U.S. Navy ordered six VH-92 A Patriot variants. On July 28, 2017, Sikorsky conducted its first official flight from Sikorsky Stratford, Connecticut. After its maiden flight, a VH-92A was flown to the White House for takeoff and landing tests at the designated Marine One site on September 22, 2018. However, in late November 2021, Pentagon officials stated that the helicopter had failed to meet the threshold requirements for reliability, availability and maintenance. Additionally, the helicopter had damaged the landing zone with exhaust gas leaks and fuel spills during test flights. As a result, the helicopter was not deemed fit for service to transport important U.S. officials. During this release delay, Sikorsky continued to seek other solutions to reduce exhaust emissions and fuel spills in the landing zone. But in February 2023, a video surfaced on YouTube capturing the Sikorsky VH-92 A Patriot in the skies over Connecticut. The following month, additional videos showed two VH-92A helicopters en route to Las Vegas during President Joe Biden's visit there. In general, Marine One is never flown alone. Usually, a Marine One is accompanied by a number of identical helicopters. This is done to confuse any potential attackers targeting the airborne convoy. During a single journey, Marine One can be escorted by up to five other helicopters, which serve as both guards and decoys. In addition to domestic use, Marine One is also often used when the President travels abroad. This helicopter is included as one of the vehicles used by the President in the motorcade procession, which transports the President and other important officials. Specifically for international travel, Marine One, along with its accompanying helicopters, is transported inside a large military cargo aircraft called the C-17 Globemaster III. Marine One can only be operated after the C-17 Globemaster III lands at the destination airport and is unloaded by the aircraft's crew, including U.S. Secret Service agents.